The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Well, a very good morning and a warm welcome to you to our service of Holy Communion uh, this morning. Uh, the service will follow the uh, Holy Communion service at home order of service. If you haven't got a copy available to, or to hand, you can find one very easily on the front page of our Benefice website. Just go to www.heathfieldbenefice.org.uk and you'll be able to find a copy of today's service uh, on the front page of our website. You'll also find the words to the hymns that we'll be singing uh, on there as well. Today's service has as its main focus uh, the importance of recognising the voice of Jesus. We'll hear the analogy of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, the one who tends his flock, the one who calls each of his sheep by name. He knows our name, but how good are we at hearing his call to us? How easily do we recognise the voice of Jesus among the many other voices uh, that compete for our attention today. Our sermon this morning uh, has been prepared by our curate, Reverend Torhilt. Um, if you're watching this service live on Facebook, um, I will be uh, giving uh, the sermon on Torhilt's uh, behalf. If you're watching it uh, on the website later on today, then hopefully if the technology works, um, you will actually be able to see Reverend Torhill giving the sermon herself. We'll see what happens. Anyway, it's good to be with you uh, this morning as we worship God together, as we give thanks for his great goodness, and as we ask for his blessings upon each one of us and upon all those in our world today who are in such need of his comfort and his salvation. So let us begin our service this morning by uh, singing together our first hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.
So let us say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Before we hear our gospel reading uh, this morning, we're going to sing our second hymn, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. <laughs> i 
of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes ahead of them and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things that I have found very enjoyable over the last week is looking at art online. I discovered online museums where I can look at paintings by some of my favorite artists, which makes it easier for me to get through this time of lockdown. There's something reassuring about letting my eyes rest on the paintings of Chagall, Rembrandt and Van Gogh paintings that I grew up seeing on posters and in books, and later went to see in galleries. There's something recognisable, familiar even, about their styles, textures, and their choice of colour. Recognition is a funny thing. Sometimes when I look at photo albums from years ago, it's as if some familiar faces are close friends seem to stand out, whereas others I don't remember much about. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus talks about recognition. The shepherd calls the sheep by name and they follow him because they recognise his voice. He paints a stark contrast between the shepherd and the thief who comes only to kill and destroy. 
The sheep won't recognise the thief's voice, but recognise the shepherd. The shepherd is the one who gains access through the gate. The thief comes in by another way, climbing over the wall. And surprisingly, Jesus not only talks about himself as being the shepherd, but also the gate itself. He is the way by which the sheep will find pasture, rest and salvation. Whereas the thief comes to kill and destroy, Jesus has come so that they may have abundant life. This passage is both a warning and a promise. A warning not to listen to the thief, but to listen to the voice of Jesus. And a promise to those who listen to Jesus and follow him, because he came to give them abundant life. The question, though, is how the sheep can know that it's really the voice of the shepherd they're hearing. How can we know that it's Jesus leading us and not something else? How can we know what voice to follow? It's deeply problematic if we know other voices better than we know the shepherd's voice. With all the voices that constantly cry out for our attention, we should be conscious of what we pay attention to. If we're not careful, we may not be able to distinguish between all the tempting promises we are given every day and those promises made to us by the Good Shepherd who's come to give us abundant life. That's why it's so important that we give our attention to Jesus and accustom ourselves to listening for his voice. In the scriptures, in the life of the church, in private prayer, and in the quietness of our hearts. If we don't, how will we be able to distinguish the voices of consumerism that we are bombarded with every day through advertisements, promising us the world, health, wealth, beauty, even love? if we're only willing to sacrifice our money, our time, our lives on its altar. How do we distinguish them from the voice of the living God? It's important that Jesus' voice becomes something we're used to listening for, so we can make sure it's him leading us, not something else. So his voice can be like that friend from decades ago whose face still jumps out at us from photos. Or that familiar style painting that helps us recognise who's behind it, even if we haven't seen that exact painting before. It's important that Jesus' voice becomes something we're used to listening for. And spending time listening to God's word in prayer and reflection is a good place to start. Amen. So let us declare together our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our intercessions uh, this morning have been prepared for us by Jane Eels, a reader in The Benefice. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in our homes, separated from many who we know and love. Yet you still call us to follow you, no matter what our situation. Please help us to be faithful to you to be more aware of what you continue to do in our world and to do what we can to witness to what you are teaching us at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church as we continue to find new ways to proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to bring his message of hope and salvation to our world. Please bless our Archbishop, Justin, the Bishop of our Diocese, Martin, and all church leaders as they encourage us and continue to lead us at this time. And we pray in particular this morning for Reverend Ruth Bushyager as she prepares to become the Bishop of Horsham, and the Reverend Will Hazelwood as he prepares to become Bishop of Lewis. Please bless them in the work you have called them to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who lead our nation, for our Queen and the Royal Family, and for our national and local governments. Give wisdom to all in authority, that they may lead our country wisely and justly, for the benefit of all its people. Inspire scientists to find a way to help control the spread of the coronavirus, and may the measures which are being put in place and the decisions which are made help to bring about an end to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give thanks for all those who are actively seeking to make a positive difference to the lives of so many who are affected by the lockdown. Bless those who continue to deliver letters and parcels those who work in shops, and those who distribute food, and those who are working to make sure essential services and communications continue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, bless all who are working so hard in our hospitals, in our nursing homes and care homes, putting their own health at risk to help those with the coronavirus, and struggling to keep those who are infirm safe from it. Dear Lord, draw alongside them with your comfort and strength. Refresh them when they tire, and keep them and their families safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we remember before you those who need your help at this time, particularly those we know and those who have asked us to pray for them and their loved ones. May they receive the help they need and grant them your peace. Please comfort all who mourn the loss of loved ones. And we remember too, Lord, that there are many who are struggling at home for whom this time of lockdown is becoming unbearable. We pray that they may receive the support and the encouragement that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend these and all our prayers to your notice, gracious Father, 
and we pray that we will recognise your answers to them, that we might praise and glorify your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we come to the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing for ever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we are bold when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the Good Shepherd and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just before the final blessing and our final hymn, uh, just one or two notices to share with you. First of all, my thanks to Reverend Tulhilt for uh, her sermon this morning. Um, also, just to let you know that um, 
in recent weeks we have been producing a new Benefis uh, electronic newsletter called The Grapevine. If you uh, don't currently receive that and would like to, uh, do please get in touch via the contact form on our website and let us know and we can very easily add your name to the distribution list. It contains all sorts of uh, links about things that are going on in the Benefis together with uh, news about the local community and that sort of thing. So do let us know if you'd like your name to be added to the uh, distribution list for the grapevine. Next Sunday uh, we will be holding a special service for VE Day, the 75th anniversary of VE Day. So do look out for more information and details about that service uh, in the coming days and there will be full details in uh, next week's edition of the Grapevine. So do look out for that. Next Sunday, the 10th of May, is uh, as well as being uh, the Sunday at the end of the celebrations for the VE Day, um, it's also the start of Christian Aid Week. Now this year Christian Aid Week is going to be uh, much more difficult for that charity than in previous years. As I understand it, it is one of their main fundraising, uh, if not their main fundraising event of the year. And of course, uh, given the current restrictions on our movement, it's going to be very difficult for them. The uh, last week's Grapevine newsletter and the next two weeks uh, newsletter will contain details of how you can donate to that vitally important work. So do please have a look at that and uh, if you're able to uh, make a donation to them, please do so. Um, there will also be details uh, coming out in the next week or two uh, regarding how you might be able to continue your giving uh, to the work of Heathfield Benefis. Uh, obviously, we uh, only the only income we have is from uh, the generous giving by so many people, and at the moment, uh, with uh, the restrictions on our services, uh, our income levels are significantly reduced. So if you are able to either increase your giving or if you don't currently give, uh, perhaps begin making a donation to the benefits, we would be enormously grateful. And there will be information coming out about how you can do that in the coming days. So as I say, thank you for joining me uh, for our service this morning. We end with a final blessing and then we will sing our final hymn. The Lord be with you. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. So we end our time together by uh, singing together our uh, final hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
faithfulness, morning.